Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids of the Week video. Well, thank you so much everyone for your patience while I'm working out the kinks on my microphone. I did get a new microphone, but it looks like that new microphone ain't exactly working out so well. It's kind of hard, it sucks, you know, the only way to truly test out a microphone is after you buy it. So it's not working out too well, might have to return it and get another one. In the meantime, I'm hoping that my old microphone here that I still have is still sounding good after doing some tests it looks like it is so I'm gonna to try to use it as much as I can while I'm getting another one sometime soon but as a thank you for your patience I decided to do another cryptid of the week for you here this random page selection from the cryptids.wiki.com website came up with this it's yet another Loch Ness type cryptid but this one actually has some pretty interesting information. Number one, according to its age, it could be one of the oldest Loch Ness type monsters around. And then number two, it also has a very specific spot that you can find it. You know, I love those particular cryptids. And then number three, there may actually be a tie-in to extraterrestrials. And I'll explain to the, on that more here in a minute. But it has to do with this. You're looking at it now. It has a very cute name in a sense known as Mussy. But it also goes by another name, a weird one called Happy Lexor, Exlor, something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and give that info as well. So let's go ahead. Let's talk about all the fascinating information associated with with this cryptid of the week. So what is this Mussy, also known as the Happy Excelor, or in other cases, also known as the Hapa Excelor? Well, again, it's a Loch Ness monster-like creature that's found up north. In this case, you have to go to Canada, specifically a lake there known as Muskrat Lake. So those of you that happen to be in that area in Canada, you're in luck. You may actually have a chance of seeing this creature there. Based on the info that I was reading, it does seem like if you're near that area, you already know of this creature because it definitely has its own attraction. It's definitely become a part of the culture and the tourism there. And I'll give my own thoughts on that here too in a minute. But yes, that is where it makes its home and apparently it has been there for quite some time. First, let's start off with its characteristics, what it looks like. Well, for starters, the most common common sighting seems to be the Loch Ness type monster. You know the ones that I'm talking about. The ones that look like a long lost dinosaur. Something straight out of, I guess, Jurassic Park that just happens to be within that lake. No different than the Loch Ness Monster itself. Interestingly enough, though, it has other forms of, 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 of its look. I guess it just depends on how quickly people have seen this creature or how far away it was from them when they saw it. For example, some people have described it as looking like a walrus. Can you believe that? Like an actual walrus, probably a much larger one, but still a walrus nonetheless. Others have stated that it looks more along the lines of a sturgeon, and yet others have stated that it looks also pretty much like a very long, large fish. And then finally, others have stated that it looks more on the lines of an alligator. That's because its head has more of an alligator neck. I'm sorry, an alligator head, but with a slender neck. And then the rest of the body looking more on the lines of a Loch Ness monster. In some cases, it has two humps. Other cases, it has a fin. In other cases, it has flippers. Other cases, if you can believe this, it also has three eyes and then finally some very large, sharp teeth. Point is, it looks like everyone has seen this creature and everyone has given its own different characteristics. So, very interesting when it comes to no one single description of this creature. And then as far as its age, that is also up to debate too. Because apparently the earliest known, I guess, 
more historical sighting happens to be around 1916 and that's because this was a there was a man who was there who apparently his name was Humphreys who decided that he was like the first one or one of the earliest people that saw this creature and he was telling everyone about it so interestingly enough others took him for his word even if they saw that it was a little bit inconsistent but that he was eventually the one who started it all and then if you're wondering where the name Mussy comes from it actually comes from Muskrat Lake itself so this guy Humphreys he's the one that saw it and then he stated since it comes from Muskrat Lake then it, the name of it is Mussy, matching in other words a muskrat itself so that's where the nickname comes from as well but if you believe other legends there's the idea that in the 17th century one of the settlers there within that area a guy by the name of Samuel de Champlain also wrote of this creature apparently in some of his works and if you go even further there's certain lore that some of the earliest known residents some of the earliest known ancestors with Within the actual area there, 10,000 years ago, no less, were describing this creature's existence. So, this is either a very, very old cryptid, which some people truly believe it is just one and it has existed this entire time, and then others mention that it's more along the lines of a species. And what people are seeing is one. Uh, one uh, messy after another like one being born another one from a family being born afterward and so on so that way it looks like it's just one but it's in fact a consistent family of them that are just outliving each other I tend to follow more along this line because even some of the oldest oldest creatures on this planet they're not going to reach 10,000 years of age. So something like this, where it's just a family of them, makes more sense. But yes, indeed, after it's made its presence known, there have been uh, attempts to try to find this creature, to try to see where it is. Again, it's just located in that one specific spot, and there have even been scientists that have gone out there who have tried to do a surveying area, tried to find anything from it. They did uh, some uh, actual looks like let's say within the deep trenches some of it even below 60 meters to try to find this creature but no that's nothing that they, they could not find no evidence of its existence much like the Loch Ness monster itself this mussy definitely knows how to keep hidden also there are some other telltale signs of its existence too people state that there are these loud screams that they hear they sound like your average like if you were to take a like a toke like a stereotypical sea monster like sound from a movie like a large probably billowy just very frightening roar that's how you would imagine something like this like when it's making it sound from the nearby banks how cool is that though imagine trying to see uh, like you're at the lake you hear something like that you're trying to see where it's coming from but you can't but you definitely know something large something powerful is definitely making this sound so very very interesting stuff too and then finally I wanted to tie in again with regards to the extra extraterrestrial part this is pretty neat too apparently there's a legend there that states that there was a bus driver somebody a bus driver for the atomic energy of Canada presumably that's like a department or somewhere nearby the area there but they saw an extraterrestrial spacecraft a UFO itself landing near a spot on a hill by that very specific lake and then it left thereafter in fact if you go there to this day you can apparently see an outline made from the landing which is a telltale sign from other UFO landings you know how you always hear those stories that like patches of grass just just stay uh, as like they stay burned or they stay uh, non-living afterwards nothing else grows within that very uh, spot itself so uh, could this UFO have been tied to Mussy was it something that it brought along or was it something that it in turn was observing within the lake that's also something interesting to think about two for one essentially when it comes to this uh, descriptive and then its potential tie-in to the uh, the UFO world and then one last tie-in I wanted to, to talk about that had to do with the local lore yes I was mentioning earlier 
it is absolutely a part of its culture anyone that's from that area let me know I mean how popular is this musty is it something that's just there lots of shops around lots of tours uh, people ready to give souvenirs the reason I mention all this is because I think also its existence ties in to that tourism. It's just nature. It's just business. Whenever you have something that can be considered pretty popular or a way to bring in more people, especially people with uh, nice tourism dollars, you can't just help but feel that, you know, maybe uh, they'll be happy to say, you know, this is the lore, this is the legend of Mussy. You may catch Mussy, you may see a sighting of him or her, and if you do, then great, but if not, you know here's a nice little trinket that you can buy so I think part of its existence also ties in to that fact nothing wrong with that I mean it's all fun every time I go on my own tours um, and I see uh, certain spots that have like let's say more lore mythic or legends to them there's always some nice souvenirs to buy but in this case uh, I do believe that it's probably 50 50 like in this case of its existence and but and then also the fact that it's just its own existence because of tourism so that's just my thoughts on that too but that's pretty much it does anyone have any more info anything else I might have missed associated with this creature anybody from that area anybody know more of its lore maybe sightings from friends family members anything along those lines please post those comments below that'd be really really great to hear some all right everybody thanks again as always take care